Meanwhile, a Raspberry Pi single board computer is already sufficient to generate images with so-called artificial intelligence according to your own ideas. In this video, I show you how this works with free and open source software. Just a few months ago, I introduced you to Stable Diffusion to generate images with it. A gaming computer with a dedicated graphics card and at least 4 gigabytes of memory was sufficient. So that's something you could use privately without having a huge computing center like OpenAI for chat GPT and other tools. But Onyxtreme has now ported stable diffusion to the architecture of the Raspberry Pi and significantly reduced the memory requirements. It's not just designed for the normal Raspberry Pi, but even for the 02W with only 512 megabytes of memory. That means a factor of 8 less memory requirement, that's great. I would still recommend a Raspberry Pi 5, preferably with active cooling so that it does not throttle. Theoretically, you can also use older models, but everything will be much slower there, both installing and generating the images afterwards. In any case, you need a lot of free space for the models. I use SDXL Turbo Unit here and that alone takes up about 18 GB. So your memory card if you use one should be at least 32 GB. To test other models, better more. The installation we are about to start with consists of a total of three components. XNN Pack is a library developed by Google that offers basic functions for frameworks in the field of machine learning. It is intended to improve their performance by making optimizations, since it supports not only x86 but also ARM and even RISC-V. It is a good basis for the Raspberry Pi. OnxStream I have already mentioned there, with the help of XNN Pack, they have managed to port Diffusion to the Pi and optimize it so that it runs with significantly less memory. Stable Diffusion uses deep learning to generate an image from the text you enter there. It mainly uses the graphics card of x86 PCs. This has been available for some time with a web interface for generating the images. Last but not least, the model with the necessary database to generate images is still missing. I have taken STXLUNet here and Xtreme also supports other models, namely Stable Diffusion 1.5 and Stable Diffusion XL 1.0. So that you can install it as easily as possible, I have made a script for you. You can find it in the article on u-labs.de, the link is in the description. You simply copy it out and go to your Raspberry Pi and use a text editor of your choice, I use Vim, for example. Using the editor create a script and call it for example, onks-stream-install.sh, you can name it as you like. We insert what I have linked in the portal. Let's take a quick look at this script here. Since it has to download and compile some things here, we need a working directory where all this happens. I have taken, home, ulabs, Onkstream, you can customize it here. Then it checks which dependencies we need. Once CMake to build the whole thing, we'll get to that in a moment. And for all the models we sometimes have very large files. For this there's the extra module git lfs for large file system in git so that it can handle such large repositories. The script install the module if not present. It starts with xnn pack. The script gets the latest source code from this project, but goes back to a certain version that is compatible with OnxStream. Then the whole thing is built here. That takes a few minutes. Now the language model of Hugging Face follows this is downloaded. This is by far the biggest download. He doesn't have to compile anything. Just download the whole thing via the LFS module for large files in Git. Finally, OnxStream itself is also cloned here. Then we have the Q code build the binary files from it and then we are already done. You can now save this, then make it executable with chmod plus x and then simply execute the script here. Now everything is done one after the other. You have to leave this open and can do something else for so long. As soon as he is done with everything then you can start generating images. Depending on what kind of Pi you have, how fast it is and, above all, how fast your internet connection is, this will take several hours. I have already prepared the whole thing here. 
When you are done with the script and no errors have occurred, go here and export the base dir variable as the base directory on the console so that we can use it now when we generate images. You can see in the working directory that we have three subfolders for each of the three components that we have just downloaded and for all except the model also compiled from source. We now go into the output folder of the binary files. It is best to use $BaseDir if you are not already in there. From $BaseDir, we go into OnkStream, SRC, Build. There is now a binary file SDD that we can execute to generate images. To call it, we now pass various parameters, for example that it runs on the Raspberry Pi. The type of model and of course the path to it. The most interesting thing here is the prompt. This is your character string from which you want to generate an image. I've just taken an example here. But you can choose it freely. We'll look at steps in a moment and output the target, where should it save the whole thing, like the graphic that is generated there. I took time before that to measure how long it takes. You can do that now and now it has this prompt here. It is now analyzed and the image is then generated. The Raspberry Pi has to sweat a lot in the process. It is almost completely utilized in this step. Therefore, as I said, the tip, it should definitely have a cooling system so that it does not get very hot and has to throttle down. The generation is now complete after a good 4 minutes. It took it on a Raspberry Pi 5. There is now a file astronaut.png in the folder that was generated here. 772 kilobytes in size. It should probably look similar to this picture here. Maybe a bit modified mirror inverted, but that should basically be the motif that you can expect. I think it looks quite good, especially when you zoom in a bit, but you can clearly see that it's not that detailed and from high quality. It's more like an oil drawing where you haven't worked in such detail. That's why I want to give you two important parameters if you want to experiment with it, that can help you much. Firstly, you've already seen that I've specified a parameter, steps 1. Artificial images are generated in several steps. The generation process based on the text prompt so in the example this was the one in quotation marks which is repeated several times and the results of these repetitions together gives us the finished image. As a general formula you can say the more layers the more details and also the higher quality the image will be that is generated. Sometimes the image changes because, for example, details are added or shifted but it will probably not turn completely 180 degrees to a new image. With one step it is relatively quick, but the images all look a bit like oil drawings, so not as detailed as you have just seen. In my tests, the quality and depth of detail increased visibly from three steps onwards. Here you can also see it in comparison with a motif where I then said I would generate it once with one step in two steps and in three steps. There is already a clear change visible you can't increase it infinitely. Since more information comes into the image with each call, it appears oversaturated at some point. This is especially the case with real representations, like if you generate a photo. This doesn't necessarily have to be bad. There are use cases where exactly that is desired or it is not so problematic like in the direction of comic style. I have an example here, if you go higher there it just gets stronger the colors have a higher saturation. That looks quite good if you want it that way. As a rule of thumb I would see a range of 3 to 6 as useful but it just depends on the subject. I have also generated some where even more layers have looked good so this is just a rough direction and you can't generalize that completely. Especially if you play around a bit and say I want to see what it looks like in 3 steps. For example, you have the problem that it generates a different image on each try. That means you can no longer compare it so directly. That's why there are the seeds with min seed. I can specify a numerical value here with this number. It should be possible to generate images at least somewhat reproducibly. If you don't specify it, it will generate a new random number itself and the images will look different. It doesn't matter which number you pass here. The only important thing is that if you want to see what the difference is between steps 3 and steps 1, 
for example, that the number is the same in both steps. That means if I say I want to see what it looks like with three steps, then I pass the number to this one, generate it with steps three and then do the same thing. So I would do that now plus as the next step I leave the seed the same. For example, change the file name to steps one so the previous one won't get overwritten and we can view them later to see their difference. It's still a bit tedious to experiment. That's why I've written a script that simplifies the whole thing here. It goes to this directory where it puts the images. The one below is our base directory from the other script, where the whole thing is installed. And now I can specify different proms here from which I want to have images generated. At the top here you specify how many steps it should take, so up to 8 in this case. The script uses a naming scheme where the number of steps is always specified in the file name and each image gets a unique number that is consecutive, so image 1, 2, 3 and so on. So you can automate this nicely and generate an image for each prompt with the number of steps, so in this case 1 to 8. It creates these images with the naming scheme and also generates a seed for each image so that you can compare the different steps. I have installed an Apache web server with PHP here so that you can also view and compare it conveniently using a web browser. Run sudo apt install apache2 php. Then I created a small script in var www.html with index.php that reads the images in the folder we have just seen and displays them clearly. This way you can access them directly in the browser. The whole thing looks like this. I have all the pictures here in such a small view where you can see them in the overview. There are some as you can see I have tried a bit what works and what does not work so well. They are linked there you can click on them then you can see them in full size. Just for the comparisons with the steps I have built in a view at the very end where each picture, like here the ID of the picture, is always grouped together and shows me below how many steps there are. That means here you can now see what this ship motif looks like with a step with one, two, three steps. There you can already see the details are clearly different. The same here below with the others. Especially with the penguin, for example, you can see it quite nicely how it starts here as an oil drawing. The sword is somehow a bit broken here. It will remain broken even if more details are added. From four steps onwards, the sword is completely intact and that looks much better. I think it's pretty impressive to see how artificial intelligence, which in reality is more machine learning, is developing at a rapid pace. By the beginning of 2024, we will have reached the point where a Raspberry Pi will be able to generate impressive images in just a few minutes on hardware for well under 100 euros. And not just by calling an API from a proprietary third-party cloud service, which is not hard but then using source running software completely free of charge without any local restrictions. It will be exciting to see how this industry develops over the next few years. I hope you found it interesting too. If so, you can find more videos about Raspberry Pi at technology and the impact of these topics on society here. How impressed are you with Onyx X Feel free to write it in the comments. See you next time.